The Caution From The Lover's Watch, 1686, by Afra Ben Read for LibriVox.org by Val Grimm My Damon, if your heart be kind, Do not too long with beauty stay, For there are certain moments when the mind Is hurried by the force of charms away. In fate a minute critical there lies, That waits on love and takes you by surprise. A lover pleased with constancy lives still As if the maid he loved were by, As if his actions were in view, As if his steps she did pursue, Or that his very soul she knew. Take heed, for though I am not present there, My love, my genius, waits you everywhere. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dawn Angels by Agnes Mary Frances Darmestetter All night I watched awake for morning. At last the east grew all aflame. The birds for welcome sang, or warning, and with their singing morning came. Along the gold-green heavens drifted pale wandering souls that shun the light whose cloudy pinions, torn and rifted, had beat the bars of heaven all night. These clustered round the moon, but higher, a troop of shining spirits went, who were not made of wind or fire, but some divine dream element. Some held the light, while those remaining shook out their harvest-colored wings, a faint, unusual music reigning, whose sound was light, on earthly things. They sang, and as a mighty river, their voices washed the night away. From east to west ran one white shiver, and waxen strong their song was day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dirge by Felicia Dorothea Hemans. Read for LibriVox.org by Karen Savage. Calm on the bosom of thy God, fair spirit, rest thee now. E'en while with ours thy footsteps trod, his seal was on thy brow. Dust to its narrow house beneath, soul to its place on high, They that have seen thy look in death no more may fear to die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Feminine by Henry Kyler Bunner Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett She might have known it in the earlier spring That all my heart with vague desire was stirred, And ere the summer winds had taken wing, I told her, but she smiled and said no word. The autumn's eager hand his red gold grasped, And she was silent till from skies grown drear fell soft one fine first snowflake, and she clasped my neck and cried, Love, we have lost a year. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Her Epitaph by Thomas William Parsons Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett The handful here that once was Mary's earth Held while it breathed so beautiful a soul That when she died all recognized her birth And had their sorrow in serene control. Not here, not here. To every mourner's heart the wintry wind Seemed whispering round her bier. And when the tomb door opened, with a start we heard it echoed from within, not here. Shouldst thou, sad pilgrim, who mayest hither pass, note in these flowers a delicater hue, should spring come earlier to this hallowed grass, or the bee later linger on the dew, know that her spirit to her body lent such sweetness, grace as only goodness can that even her dust, and this her monument, have yet a spell to stay one lonely man. Lonely through life, 
but looking for the day when what is mortal of himself shall sleep, when human passion shall have passed away, and love no longer be a thing to weep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. His Steady Sails He Never Furls by Henry David Thoreau Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake His Steady Sails He Never Furls at Any Time of Year And Perching Now on Winter's Curls He Whistles in His Ear End of Poem this recording is in the public domain. Mental Cases by Wilfred Owen Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Who are these? Why sit they here in twilight? Wherefore rock they, purgatorial shadows? Drooping tongues from jaws that slob their relish, Bearing teeth that leer like skulls' tongues wicked, Stroke on stroke of pain. But what slow panic gouged these chasms Round their fretted sockets? Ever from their hair and through their hand-palms Misery swelters. Surely we have perished sleeping, and walk hell but who these hellish these are men whose minds the dead have ravished memory fingers in their hair of murders multitudinous murders they once witnessed waiting sloughs of flesh these helpless wander treading blood from lungs that loved laughter always they must see these things and hear them batter of guns and shatter of flying muscles carnage incomparable and human squander rucked too thick for these men's extrication therefore still their eyeballs shrink tormented back into their brains because on their sense Sunlight seems a blood smear. Night comes blood black. Dawn breaks open like a wound that bleeds afresh. Thus their heads wear this hilarious, hideous, awful falseness of set smiling corpses. Thus their hands are plucking at each other picking at the rope-knots of their scourging, snatching after us who smote them, brother, pawing us who dealt them war and madness. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mental Cases by Wilfred Owen Read for LibriVox.org by David Barnes Who are these? Why sit they here in twilight? Wherefore rock they, purgatorial shadows, Drooping tongues from jaws that slob their relish, Bearing teeth that leer like skulls' tongues wicked, stroke on stroke of pain but what slow panic gouged these chasms round their fretted sockets ever from their hair and through their hand palms misery swelters surely we have perished sleeping and walk hell but who these hellish these are men whose minds the dead have ravished, Memory fingers in their hair of murders, Multitudinous murders they once witnessed, Wading sloughs of flesh these helpless wander, 
treading blood from lungs that had loved laughter. Always they must see these things and hear them, batter of guns and shatter of flying muscles, carnage incomparable and human squander rucked too thick for these men's extrication. Therefore still their eyeballs shrink tormented back into their brains, because on their sense sunlight seems a blood smear, night comes blood black, dawn breaks open like a wound that bleeds afresh, Thus their heads wear this hilarious, hideous, awful falseness of set smiling corpses. Thus their hands are plucking at each other, picking at the rope knots of their scourging, snatching after us who smote them, brother, pouring us who dealt them war and madness. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Outlaw's Song by Joanna Bailey, read for LibriVox.org by Karen Savage. The chuff and crow to roost are gone, the owl sits in the tree, the hushed wind wails with feeble moan, like infant charity. The wildfire dances on the fen, the red star sheds its ray. Uprouse ye then, my merry men, it is our opening day. Both child and nurse are fast asleep, and closed is every flower, and winking tapers faintly peep high from my lady's bower. Bewildered hinds with shortened ken shrink on their murky way. Uprouse ye then, my merry men, it is our opening day. Nor board nor garner own we now, nor roof nor latched door, nor kind mate bound by holy vow to bless a good man's store. Noon lulls us in a gloomy den, and night is grown our day. Uprouse ye then, my merry men, and use it as ye may. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Pains of Sleep by Samuel Taylor Coleridge Read for LibriVox.org by David Barnes Ere on my bed my limbs I lay, It hath not been my use to pray With moving lips or bended knees, But silently, by slow degrees, My spirit I to love compose, In humble trust mine eyelids close With reverential resignation, No wish conceived, no thought expressed, only a sense of supplication, a sense o'er all my soul impressed that I am weak yet not unblessed, since in me, round me, everywhere, eternal strength and wisdom are. But yesternight I prayed aloud in anguish and in agony, Upstarting from the fiendish crowd of shapes and thoughts that tortured me, A lurid light, a trampling throng, sense of intolerable wrong, And whom I scorned, those only strong. Thirst of revenge, the powerless will still baffled and yet burning still, Desire with loathing strangely mixed, On wild or hateful objects fixed, Fantastic passions, maddening brawl, And shame and terror over all, Deeds to be hid, which were not hid, Which, all confused, I could not know Whether I suffered or I did, For all seemed guilt, remorse, or woe, my own or others still the same, Life-stifling fear, soul-stifling shame. So two nights passed, the night's dismay Saddened and stunned the coming day. Sleep, the wide blessing, seemed to me Distemper's worst calamity. The third night, when my own loud scream Had wakened me from the fiendish dream, O'ercome with suffering strange and wild, I wept as I had been a child. 
and having thus by tears subdued my anguish to a milder mood, such punishments, I said, were due to nature's deepliest stained with sin. For I, entempesting anew the unfathomable hell within, the horror of their deeds to view, to know and loathe, yet wish and do. Such griefs with such men well agree, but wherefore, wherefore fall on me? To be beloved is all I need, And whom I love, I love indeed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Phantom Wooer by Thomas Lovell Beddoes Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica A ghost that loved a lady fair, Ever in the starry air of midnight at her pillow stood, And, with a sweetness skies above the luring words of human love, Her soul the phantom wooed. Sweet and sweet is their poisoned note, The little snakes of silver throat, In mossy skulls that nest and lie, Ever singing, die, oh die. Young soul, put off your flesh, and come with me into the quiet tomb. Our bed is lovely, dark and sweet. The earth will swing us as she goes, beneath our coverlid of snows, and the warm leaden sheet. Dear and dear is their poisoned note, the little snakes of silver throat, in mossy skulls that nest and lie, ever singing, die, oh die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Prayer for Indifference by Fanny Greville Read for LibriVox.org by Karen Savage I ask no kind return of love, no tempting charm to please. Far from the heart those gifts remove, that sighs for peace and ease. Nor peace nor ease the heart can know, that, like the needle true, turns at the touch of joy or woe, but turning trembles too. Far as distress the soul can wound, Tis pain in each degree, Tis bliss but to a certain bound, Beyond is agony. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The River Swelleth More and More by Henry David Thoreau Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake The river swelleth more and more, Like some sweet influence stealing o'er the passive town, And for a while each tussock makes a tiny isle, Where, on some friendly Ararat, Resteth the weary water-rat, no ripple shows musketiquit, Her very current e'en is hid, As deepest souls do calmest rest, When thoughts are swelling in the breast. And she that in the summer's drought Doth make a rippling and a rout, Sleeps from Nashatuck to the cliff, Unruffled by a single skiff. But by a thousand distant hills The louder roar a thousand rills, and many a spring which now is dumb, And many a stream with smothered hum, Doth swifter well and faster glide, Though buried deep beneath the tide. Our village shows a rural Venice, Its broad lagoons where yon fen is, As lovely as the bay of Naples, Yon placid cove amid the maples and in my neighbor's field of corn i recognize the golden horn here nature taught from year to year when only red men came to hear methinks twas in this school of art venice and naples learned their part but still their mistress to my mind her young disciples leave behind end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Sheep and Lambs by Catherine Tynan Hinkson Read for LibriVox.org by Karen Savage 
All in the April morning, April airs were abroad. The sheep with their little lambs passed by me on the road. The sheep with their little lambs passed by me on the road. All in an April evening I thought on the Lamb of God. The lambs were weary and crying, with a weak human cry. I thought on the Lamb of God, going meekly to die. Up in the blue, blue mountains, dewy pastures are sweet. Rest for the little bodies, rest for the little feet. Rest for the Lamb of God, up on the hilltop green. Only a cross of shame, two stark crosses between. All in an April evening, April airs were abroad. I saw the sheep with their lambs, and thought on the Lamb of God. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sometimes I hear the Viri's Clarion by Henry David Thoreau. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Sometimes I hear the Viri's Clarion or brazen trump of the impatient jay, and in secluded woods the chickadee doles out her scanty notes, which sing the praise of heroes, and set forth the loveliness of virtue evermore. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Summer Night by George William Russell Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica Her mist of primroses within her breast Twilight hath folded up and o'er the west seeking remoter valleys long hath gone not yet hath come her sister of the dawn silence and coolness now the earth enfold jewels of glittering green long mists of gold hazes of nebulous silver veil the height and shake in tremors through the shadowy night heard through the stillness as in whispered words the wandering god-guided wings of birds ruffle the dark the little lives that lie deep hid in grass join in a long-drawn sigh more softly still and unheard through the blue the falling of innumerable dew lifts with gray fingers all the leaves that lay burned in the heat of the consuming day the lawns and lakes lie in this night of love admitted to the majesty above earth with the starry company hath part the waters hold all heaven within their heart, and glimmer o'er with wave-lips, everywhere lifted to meet the angel lips of air. The many homes of men shine, near and far, peace-laden as the tender evening star. The late homecoming folk anticipate their rest beyond the passing of the gate, and tread with sleep-filled hearts and drowsy feet. O oh, far away, and wonderful, and sweet all this, all this! But far too many things obscuring, as a cloud of seraph wings blinding the seeker for the Lord behind, I fall away in weariness of mind, and think how far apart are I and you, beloved, from those spirit children who felt but one single being long ago, whispering in gentleness, and leaning low out of its majesty, as child to child. I think upon it all with heart grown wild. Hearing no voice, howe'er, my spirit broods, No whisper from the dense infinitudes, This world of myriad things whose distance awes. Ah, me, how innocent our childhood was! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sunrise in the Hills of Satsuma by Mary McNeil Fenelosa Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica The day unfolds like a lotus bloom, pink at the tip and gold at the core, rising up swiftly through waters of gloom that lave night's shore. Down bamboo stalks the sunbeams slide, darting like glittering elves at play to the thin-arched grass where crickets hide and sing all day. 
the old crows caw from the camphor boughs they have builded there for a thousand years their nestlings stir in a huddled drowse to pipe shrill fears a white fox creeps to his cum in the hill a small gray ape peers up at the sun crickets and sunbeams are quarreling still day has begun end of poem this recording is in the public domain thou dusky spirit of the wood by henry david thoreau read for LibriVox.org by alan davis drake thou dusky spirit of the wood bird of an ancient brood flitting thy lovely way a meteor in the summer's day from wood to wood from hill to hill low over forest field and rill what wouldst thou say why shouldst thou haunt the day what makes thy melancholy float what bravery inspires thy throat and bears thee up above the clouds over desponding human crowds which far below lay thy haunts low end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Upon the Lofty Elm Tree Sprays by Henry David Thoreau Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Upon the Lofty Elm Tree Sprays the Vireo Rings the Changes Sweet during the trivial summer days driving to lift our thoughts above the street end of poem this recording is in the public domain the vine by robert herrick read for LibriVox.org by val grimm I dreamed this mortal part of mine was metamorphosed to a vine, which, crawling one in every way, enthralled my dainty Lucia. Methought her long small legs and thighs I with my tendrils did surprise, her belly, buttocks, and her waist by my soft nervelets were embraced. About her head I writhing hung, and with rich clusters hid among the leaves, her temples I behung, so that my Lucia seemed to me young Bacchus ravished by his tree. My curls about her neck did crawl, and arms and hands they did enthrall, so that she could not freely stir. All parts there made one prisoner. But when I crept with leaves to hide those parts which maids keep unespied, such fleeting pleasures there I took with the fancy i awoke and found ah me this flesh of mine more like a stock than like a vine end of poem this recording is in the public domain